Hi, Caitlin. Hi, Jackie. Look at us. Look at us. <laughs> We're on Zoom. Our favorite place to be. Which I think we should just start off by thanking our um, anybody who's tuning in. Thank you for showing up. This is Patty Jack's Knits. But who do we want to thank that helps us not be on Zoom, Caitlin? <laughs> who do we want to what? Thank that helps us not be on Zoom. We can still oh. hear you. Right. So thank you to our patrons who have um, been supporting us for more than a year now um, with the goal that Jackie and I, since we are heartbroken to not be in the same state, for those of you just tuning in, we used to live in the same state. This is where Kate would say. Yes, uh, in Madison, Wisconsin. Jackie is still there and I am in Knoxville, Tennessee. And we launched our Patreon account um, to support us being able to travel back and forth to see one another. Mm -hmm. And so most of the time we can, and some of the time we can't. So we do have an upcoming trip um, that's very exciting and is certainly supported by our patrons. But today, not so much. <laughs> we had some timely things we wanted to get out to you. We do, yes. Um, can we start with Hi, Caitlin. Oh, and I'm Jackie. Yep. Caitlin, are you ready for a poem? So ready. So I. I haven't read this recently, but it's called Irises, and it's by um, Lee Young Lee. And if you follow me on Instagram, I've been carrying around his books everywhere, and I love him so much. And anyways, I just wanted to, one of the reasons why I read poetry is just to center me. and. I have been thinking all morning about needing to get centered. So here comes Iris's Caitlin. Okay. It says, in the night, in the wind at the edge of rain, I find five irises and call them lovely. As if a woman once lay by them a while, then woke, rose, went. The memory of hair lingers on their sweet tongues. I'd like to tear these petals with my teeth. I'd like to investigate these hairy selves, their beauty and indifference. They hold their breaths all their lives and open, open. We are not lovers, not brother and sister, though we drift hand in hand through a hall, thrilling and burning as thought and desire expire, and over this dream of life, this life of sleep, we waken dying, violet becoming blue, growing black, black, all that an iris ever prays when it prays to be. That is it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I, I was thinking actually this morning, Caitlin, about our knitting and sensuality. And you're going to love the metaphor, but I'm going to share it anyways. Sorry, people. It, it's as if, if we went through, if we were the kind of lovers where all we cared about was climax or Wait, let's be clear. You and I are not lovers. But, but <laughs> we're all are lovers of ourselves and other people, hopefully, you know. And we wouldn't want to be just focused on climax. We would we want to be interested in our sensuality all the time, you know touch, color, noticing. And I feel like sometimes knitting can get, can shift into this place of like products and pressure, etc. And can I perform? Doesn't this all sound very familiar to another area of our lives? Um, I would say yes, except I lost total connection and just got back to doesn't this <laughs> Okay. This is going to be a great Zoom podcast where Caitlin doesn't hear any. Oh, okay. Yeah, and now we're not hearing you, Caitlin. Maybe we'll bring up the phone. Like, <laughs> you remember this, Caitlin? Well, yeah, we don't hear you at all. Yeah, I know. It just, I've never had it be this bad. I, it's just completely going out. 
Okay, well, I'm still here. I'm still mm -hmm. talking about sex. <laughs> Great, I'm glad I missed it. All by myself. No, I think I think I'm, it's a lot of questions we get from people are like, help me with color, help me with st fitting, and which are fine. But again, I think all of those endeavors, whether is getting to know what gives you pleasure and paying attention to that. Mm -hmm. And knitting is this opportunity for that. And I honestly think that's your, your superpower, Caitlin, as a knitter. Yeah. You are very in tune with what gives you pleasure. Very true. Mm -hmm. And what doesn't. And what doesn't. Exactly. <laughs> yes. My weakness as a knitter, I can say, is sometimes I get into the performance of it and, mm -hmm. and the production of it. And I, and I see like some of the correspondence on Instagram or otherwise that we get are people rushing themselves, feeling like whether or not they're going to be included or they have the right things. And I guess that's where I wanted to start this podcast as we head into Rhinebeck is <clears throat> you are you, all of you who go or don't go and watch at home or are just knitting, you are the event your magic, your life, the fact that you're here and that you experience, you know, we're all knitters because of the sensual pleasure of fiber, a color, a texture, and, e and then the joy of knowing each other. It, and there's nothing to achieve in these events. So maybe you don't get to go. Maybe it rains on Saturday. Maybe it's too hot to wear our knits, all of these things. Right. All of that is possible, but at the same time, the big question that we just have to keep coming back to is just letting ourselves be present and to be noticing and go, how can I cultivate my relationships and cultivate my knowledge of what gives me joy? I think that's why we do that. I think this is the path we're on as knitters. At least it's, it is for me. Mm -hmm. Did you hear any of that? Yeah, I heard the whole thing. Was I froze? I was just, I'm listening. And how, and how do you feel? Because don't, how are you navigating the kind of the pressure of preparing and all of that? Well, I think there's a little bit of a difference in like, um, we're sort of not an anonymous, <laughs> I think the other part of it is we're not necessarily anonymous um, goers to these events. You know, obviously we have a big cal going on in case you're tuning in, you have no idea. <laughs> you can catch up soon. Um, so I, I don't know. I think it is like, yes, there's definitely a hype. There's definitely this like sense like you're going to a party and am I going to wear the right thing to the party? You know, we've talked about that before. Um, but ultimately, yes, it's, I think what we found is we, you know, if we, if we're lucky, we'll look at yarn, but really for us, it's about meeting the people and connecting and sharing in this collective of, of making yeah and you know and really thrill like the thrill of that you know encountering people who have something on that you never seen before and now will maybe go home and knit it you know like that inspiration but i think to set the intention to open yourself to what you're attracted to mm -hmm. what draws you what excites you but but let that just be information let that not be pressure that's what I mean. Oh, I know. I mean, it's, that's, of course, that's, that would be a goal. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, sometimes those things are a struggle. And, yeah, we found out that, you know, one of our friends, Gazelle, will be coming. I yeah. wore a stick today in, in spirit. <laughs> oh, I know. I know. Yeah, there's a lot of our um, knitting community friends who are not able to travel, even though they really we're going to plan a be at Rhinebeck. So um, that's really heartbreaking because I, I think, <laughs> I, you know, in the back of our, in my head, the whole time has been, will, will I get sick before I need to go? You know, like we're all just sort of wondering what's going to happen. And that's um, a hard thing. Mm -hmm. So in, in the responsibility of being a podcaster or whatnot, we will try to take footage for you so that if you're not there, you are get to come in a, in a way. And yeah. I know we'll talk about some of the things that are upcoming and some of the ways that you can participate from afar too. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. So Caitlin, okay. I do see, I mean, since we're here, 
I do see, and speaking of Rhinebeck and one of the traditions, one of the big traditions, of course, is a Rhinebeck sweater. Right. I'm right. going to take mine off the dress form so okay. we can get it up close. Yep. So we tend to, um, the last time we went to Rhinebeck, we knit the same sweaters, but in different colorways and in tradition, that tradition and spirit, we decided to do that again. Yes. And so we're knitting, the, we have knit the Selly, which is this beautiful design by Alex Bird. Um, and yeah, the first time we saw it was in Lina Magazine. Mm -hmm. um, so, and we had the privilege of knitting with what was a Spas Tree Co's um, brand label of yarn um, Sunday morning. And they've got some exciting news that we'll come back to talk about. Um, but we're, we both knitted in Sunday morning. You and I chose different base colors. So yours is full English mm -hmm. and mine is Wanderlust. And then we had the contrasting colors we shared, which were shh and- um, Full English. Full English, oh, full English, sorry. Your, your main color is what? Cover to cover. Cover to cover, yep. So full English is the, the camel color and sh is this lavendery color. Yeah, um, for sure. So. Um, <clears throat> so let's talk about the yarn first of all. Mm -hmm. Now Sonder yarns. Yes. And Melissa from Espastri Co is taking on, I, I think she'll still call it Sunday morning, I'm assuming. Yeah. I thought so, but Rico mm -hmm. will still carry it. Mm -hmm. But it is absolute. This isn't blocked. This is just out of my like knitting lap. It's exquisite. It really is. Do you have the fiber content with you, or do you want me to grab? No, but I can look it up. That's all right. Let me look it up. I've got my. Um, it is just exquisite. The quality of the yarn, and of course, her palette. It was fun for Caitlin and I to come up with, you know, like we did with our last one, like a lot of you do, a palette that expresses both of us. So yeah. I, of course, chose full English and she chose shh. And, yeah. and, and so I have, like, do you feel the same way? Do you feel when you come to the full English, oh, there's my bits of Jackie? Sure. I mean... <laughs> Because I wouldn't have chosen sh or whatever at right if right. it wasn't you. And, right. No, I do. And then the only thing that I, as I was going, I love how um, I followed the pattern exactly like color one and color two. But you, um, ch when you got to the borders, you changed it. And and right. that, well, not just the border. I changed the shoulder too. I wanted to start with sh with sh. I yeah. So I, part of me was thinking I should do the opposite of everything Caitlin did, but yeah. instead I just followed the pattern. Well, which ended up being opposite. In the sleeve, but not in the, in the neckline, for instance, like I should have had a, a, oh. an old English neckline. Oh, you mean you, if you switched it up? Yeah. No, but I, right. I, so yeah, so our necklines are the same. I, I really, okay. Yeah, it's funny. The color come is coming up. So, but I actually think the light. I mean, I'm even though I love full English, I think I'm yeah. glad I have the higher contrast because it kind of looks like a little necklace then. Well, and I think it goes really beautifully with your eyes. Oh, thanks, thanks, Caitlin. You were looking up the fiber content. Oh yes, yeah. so it's um, it's a four ply. They call it rustic yet soft fingering blend of blue face, Lester and Masham fibers. So um, I have no idea what that means other than it's for the particular type of sheep, but it really does have a, uh, a beautiful halo to it. Um, I will say that uh, I did do my best to follow the instructions to the letter. Uh, I did swatch ahead of time. And then for some reason, after I got about this far, realized that I had switched my needle size. So you knitted on a, Two I knitted on a, five. yeah. And I knit mine on a four by accident. So mine is definitely a little bit looser gauge, but I, I, but I decided not to rip back because I liked the way it felt. So um, it does have flexibility that way. Um, and I did, 
Yeah, so that was my only like, oops. So yours probably has a more dense feeling yeah. to it. And of course I made sure my neckline was higher <laughs> than the pattern, but. So you did change it? I just did the, the very first size. Yeah. The, and then I switched to the third size around the bust. Yeah. And then I just was sort of winging it in terms of, cause it's a basic sweater other yeah. than this. So. Right. And did you end up, how many repeats did you end up? I did 10. I like my sleeve to like almost not be long enough. I, I don't, I don't like this feeling. Like, right. So I like a little wrist peeping through. Yeah. Otherwise I want them huge. Yeah, but you clearly have a lot longer arms because. Or we just have a different row gauge. Is that true? Um, yeah. Because I have, I did it on smaller needles, so it should probably mm -hmm. be a little we're, yeah. we're not really intending this to be like our, this by the way would make the most epic sweater dance video because of these arms. I was telling Caitlin, mm -hmm. be ready. We're going to have yes. to because. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll do some full photo styling when we're together wearing them and posting them. But we like to have a little mystery ahead of Rhinebeck. I mean, obviously you see it here first people, but um, we will definitely post some great photos. This was one of those cases though. Um, I have been deeply, deeply stressed and challenged. And I had to say to Caitlin a few weeks back, I don't think I can get this knit. And, and I didn't post pictures of the process on social media like I might normally have. And I felt torn because of course I want, I'm so grateful to Melissa and Lisa for this yarn and I want to advertise how friggin' amazing it is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Because it is. And of course, I want to have, I want to twin with Caitlin, but I was like, I can't deliver. I just can't. And I let it go. And it's interesting. And I fully supported you in letting it go. The sweetest thing ever. And, um, and she had there's to no point in having that pressure, just like yeah. we talked about. Yeah. And so she had to pivot her expectations. And then I did actually get sick. And um, like I got a cold and took several COVID tests. I don't have COVID, but that's the only reason why this is done is because I got sick. And so I was home sick. Um, but what do I want to say about it is, I don't know. I just, I feel like this era is just very much like you have, it's, this is the learning for all of us. It's just to, to just, let go of expectations and plans and just mm -hmm. keep working with what is. Mm -hmm. And I'm so thrilled that it turned out that we can have this experience, but I wasn't sure it was going to happen. Right. Well, usually you're the one that, um, that powers through uh, these, these things and has them done way in advance. And I think in some ways our roles switch because I got it done weeks ago, though, there's still um, ends being- I know, I'm going to save weaving in the ends for travel. I know, I thought that'd be a great thing too, but, um, or they're just going to be in there. I'll just weave in the ends you can't see. It won't come out um, or won't show. But uh, yeah, so I did feel like I wanted to get this sort of, get ahead of this and not, I, I really don't thrive under pressure. That is where I probably break down and find my most darkest places when mm -hmm. I feel the pressure to do something, even if it's joyous, you know, in the end. But, yeah. oh, I was, so I was just going to say, but I found it to be a really enjoyable knit. Um, I think this um, Rusamine detail on the sleeve um, looks daunting. It's a little bit fussy in that we double stranded our yarn. And like you said last time or previously that um, if you were gonna do it, we would recommend doing DK weight for the contrast color. Cause then you're just not dealing it's with it. Especially much. if you're getting the Sunday morning because. Yes, yeah, so because they have it. Um, but uh, I found it to be a really enjoyable knit, just super engaging, just in the, the thrill of it. There were definitely new techniques to me like this, the braid, um, which is just a, really simple twist but uh yeah i think for a simple um you know a basic shape 
Like, she's elevated in such lovely way and um and you can do so many fun concert like i could see doing some mohair or you know they're just things that you could do that would be really fun um absolutely. and you could do um a different palette all together sure you know? totally i mean it just is open for so much interpretation I, and the and for me the reason why it was you know a stressful knit is because of the yarn management you know if, and just not having the time, you know, because there's, it's a project where you have to sit down and have your yarn yeah. available. I knit mine out of a box. <laughs> Which and, I'm sure was not aesthetically pleasing for you. No, but here's the box. I'm going to show it anyway. You know? <laughs> nice box. It's a beautiful box. Of course you have a beautiful box. Yeah. No, you didn't. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Um, oh, go ahead. Sorry. I was just going to say, in particular, it, until you get into the sleeves, you have, you know, you come here and then you have a lot of yarn and then you have a lot of yarn again. So it, it's it, during the yoke, you have a lot to manage. Yeah, I didn't, I don't know. Surprisingly, I didn't find that difficult. It, it was, it wasn't, it's not the knitting, it's your yeah. context. Because if it's summer and you have all day, fine. Oh. Totally. You're home yeah. and you're exhausted as fuck. <laughs> it's not okay. Totally. Yes, you were you were not in the right place to. Um, yeah. <clears throat> but anyway, yes. It, but it's a great knit. Um, super excited for us to be twinning around town. Yes, I can't like stop looking at it on screen. These sleeves are stunning, and I think that should segue into why one of the reasons why we chose this knit is because we wanted to wear something and not have the yoke have all the design. Because what did we want to wear, Caitlin? Okay, I missed that too, sorry. What? Oh, I was saying we chose the design because we wanted to wear our half and half triangle wraps. Right. So everybody, <laughs> here's a half and half triangle wrap. <laughs> yep. And we are going to have a meetup. Do you want to talk about the meetup? Sure. Yeah. So our so Rhinebeck, um, or the New York Sheep and Wool Festival, just in case people are not aware, takes place in Rhinebeck, New York, um, and it's this uh, it's Saturday, October sixteenth. So depending on when you see this, um, it could have already happened or it could be days away. So uh, we will be, meet, our plan is to meet up at 2 p.m. on what they call the hill, um, where I, I don't know that that's very obvious, but you'll see a large, large gathering of people. There are a lot of other podcasters or knitters and designers that have meetups around the same time. So just um, look for the sea of color of half wraps. We'll be meeting up and then hopefully organizing people in some sort of color order and taking lots of photos. Um, we want to make sure that everybody knows, like, if you have three stitches cast on, please just come. If you have your yarn, if you're going to be buying the yarn, you know, just come. This is really about community. It'll be a great opportunity for you to see other people's color combinations and meet people. And, and that's all this is about. Um, but we are super thrilled to, um, to just be meeting up with everybody. Uh, so it will be 2 p.m. at the Hill. And um, we will just be having lots of fun at that point. And do remember though, there, <clears throat> I think some of the, you know, pressure is partially created because there's an amazing giveaway. Yes. And you need to have your finished object. If you want to participate in that, that giveaway, you need to have it um, documented on our Ravelry page by Friday. So Friday is when we're going to draw the names so we'll probably, just so you know, we're going to be Friday, we'll talk about this in a minute, at Cake Palooza all day. Mm -hmm. And then when we get home from that, we'll draw the names. So Friday night, we'll draw the names. So, if, yeah, so maybe we should give a time to just have people have a deadline to have it um, entered by. Okay. I should check the Ravelry thing because maybe I wrote a deadline on oh, it. Oh, okay. Why don't we'll you do that? Time on the Ravelry thing, but just obviously if you get it in, I mean, 
then you'll be eligible for these very generous gift certificates from Pearl Soho um, for, and you've probably heard the denominations before, but there's one for $500, two for 250 and four for 125, which is absolutely amazing. Yes. <clears throat> and we, I still have, I have my fourth um, half and half on my needles. That's what I'm gonna be taking to Rhinebeck to knit. Uh, I know that I will be knitting them the rest of my life. If you haven't had a chance to see, oh my gosh, you need to check out um, Stress Knits, Stacy's podcast. <laughs> it's adorable how, uh, how she, um, she's made a whole video about it and about, and we're actually gonna talk about linen quilts some more because we have a, uh, I think we've changed the name a couple of times. And I, my, right now my brain is going, is it for, it's for the, for the quill of it or for the i think it's for the quill of it yeah <laughs> but but we'll be launching that after rhinebeck and espastrico is giving away two sweater quantities and i didn't bring it down i could i should go get it of a uh, linen quill for paula Pereira's daily pullover and and caitlin and i will talk about that on an episode we'll wear our dailies and remind you of how fabulous it is um, but it can be anything in linen quilts. So the fun continues. So even if you're not part of the first cal giveaway, you can be part of the second cal. And please know we'll be knitting these forever. It was, right. oh. yeah, go ahead. What were you going to say? Well, I was just going to say, I was just thinking about this as we were, as we were updating the show notes, but I think we should still, um, keep the hashtag half wrap cow going. So even if we don't have an end goal, we can still see everybody's posts and just really enjoy the journey of it. Cause there really is no reason to end because no one is ready to give this up yet. So, mm -hmm. um, so anyway, so continue to use that. I think that'll be a great thing. Um, and then I, I feel like you just said there's going to be a giveaway, but I feel like you said a spas tree co was giving yeah. away. Oh, yes. So. Um, Pearl, so yeah. sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. Spastry, oh, if you'd like to join in and give something away, feel free. <laughs> we just make stuff up as we yeah, go. Yeah, I was like, wait a minute, I'm not, I'm like, what am I not in the know of? <laughs> the sun came out. Nice to you. talking about it. There we go. I yeah. Um, so we will definitely post information on our Instagram page. Oh, she's talking about posting information, but we can't hear her. Say something again, Caitlin. Nope. Okay, she can't hear us. We're having a little Zoom issue for a moment. Um, so I just want to talk about a couple things too. I mean, I don't need to talk about it at this moment, but we're on the subject of linen quilt. I want to show you something. So somebody asked me for my leftover um, butterscotch. Can you hear me now? Yeah. So I don't have that because I gave it to them. But these are my leftover bits from my linen quill so far. <laughs> and do you happen to have the project you're currently knitting? The shawl that, do you have that with you? Yes, I do. I was going to talk about that, my, my whip. Yeah. Can yeah. I mean, it's sort of on topic. No, it totally is. I, um, I'm just hoping that it's, I'm sort of in the middle of a row, but so, you know, it's the podcasters thing you're not supposed to do, but I am currently knitting what's called number 10 and it's a shawl by Versace Knits. And I'm going to show the, the full sort of view of it. Um, last time we podcast in New York, Debbie uh, was knitting this. And um, so you got to see the full version of it, but uh, so I'm knitting it out of the original yarn, which is, I'll just, I know we're going to segue into, but I'll just do it. So, so I'm knitting it out of, hy sorry for the crinkle, Hypothesis Yarns. Um, and her colorway is called Wes Anderson Collection. I'm not sure it's available, but I'm hoping that if there are enough viewers that are interested and message her and say, I saw it on Candy Jacks, you've got to make this, because I know Jackie would like a kit too. Um, so... Uh, the colors are just amazing, but what it is is it's two sets of minis and the minis are 20 gram minis. Um, 
And so everything is paired in two color pairings, um, but we were thinking that it would be absolutely fabulous for, um, to use for the bit, the leftover bits of linen quill. Yeah. And or, did I did you get to hear me that whole time or did it cut I, out? The whole time. You're okay. so from doing this. <laughs> I can't even see what I'm doing because, you know. You're holding up two fingers, but we heard you. So. And I'm just splashing some of my linen quill, just a, a little bit of it, because yeah. it would also be amazing in linen quill. So totally. You take your leftover bits. I mean, and they have an amazing palette too. Yeah. And I honestly think it would be just a gorgeous tribute to all the linen quilts. It would totally be. And I think um, there, and I, I was um, messaging back and forth with one of our viewers, um, Jackie Kayla, and she was like, what about if we do a linen quill leftover swap? So if somebody wants to organize something like that, I don't know how it would work, but you know, we all know that the third color of our hat, like the third skein of each color, you know, has a significant amount. It's probably more than um, two minis combined. So um, it'll be interesting to see what's left over of this when I'm done, um, but it would be really easy to weigh and sort of do an update about that. But if this would be absolutely stunning in linen quill. And I think you could do it without doing as many colors too um, and figure out sort of how you wanna do it. Uh, but I will say that I'm absolutely in love with this shawl pattern. It, to me, is sort of the next um, shawl you could knit that's as soothing as the half wrap, but maybe even more so because you get to change colors so often. Um, and it can just be any palette you want. So, And it's just garter. So there's nothing complicated other than twisting your yarn in sort of an intarsia style when you come to, you know, the line of, of switching to the new color. So, and I also want to say that it's a crescent shaped shawl, which to me is the perfect shape. Like that's the shawl shape that I really love and adore. So totally, totally recommend that um, for linen quill. And I'm just bringing out my um, other linen quill shawl. Yeah. That so just saying that it's very, it's an incredible shawl yarn because it's yes. drapey. And this is yep. a you know, mosaic stitch, fabulous. And as we talked about with the Paula Pereira <clears throat> in stockinette, it's amazing, gorgeous palette. So totally. it would be really fun co continuation. Yes, for yeah. sure. And because so many people have wanted more colors, you know, they've been like, I want more colors. So we are going to bring to, when we're at Cape Palooza, which we'll talk about, we're going to have their whole palette with us, the color cards. So you can like look at that and maybe write down colors that you would be interested in. It's so fun. Person, put them next to each other, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Get I love that idea of some viewer, not, I can't do it, sorry, <laughs> organizing a share or an exchange. Oh, I know. I, that's why I was like, if somebody wants to start a database, <laughs> uh, I, you know, I think we need to, um, you know, work our influence on um, Spost, not Spostrico, hello, we love you, Spostrico, um, Pearl Soho to do minis. Mm. I know minis are a pain, but can you imagine? Um. Well, I think I thought you were going to say because I, you were able to find Stacy from Stress Knits, the yarn she needed. I know yes. some people yarn they've needed. You're still waiting for the rose granite. I am. So if there's a viewer out there that's like, oh, I just want to uh, send this to Caitlin. Send me a message and we can chat um, because it's still out of stock. But I am you probably a game right of your June. What? You're only on your second skein of your green. Yeah, right? I'm almost on my third. Oh, okay. But so I've got time. I'm not in a rush. I figure, you know what? In the spirit of what you were talking about, the rose granite will make its way to me when it's time. Exactly. There's plenty of other knitting in between, so I'm not worried about it. And in fact, I've, I've set it aside because I'm so obsessed with this number 10. That Yeah. Well, and so anyways, just to conclude, if you're not going to be at Rhinebeck, um it, it's just been so beautiful the chat on the Ravelry feed and the hashtag yeah. and 
the posts, the creative posts, the, some, the also just really like heartfelt posts mm -hmm. about needing the comfort. And so I, I guess I'm, I'm just so thrilled that people have found such comfort in this knit and I don't want it to end in like a race to the finish because that's exactly what this is not about. So don't let those prizes get in the way of your sense of belonging and comfort because that's the essential thing. For and sure. The other thing is you didn't even have to do it in linen quilt. Right. And, oh, I meant to say that too. Yeah. One yeah. of, go ahead. Oh, I guess. Let's just reiterate. Oh, she's frozen and we can't hear her. So what she's saying <laughs> is that you can knit it in any fingering weight shawl and that I was just going to say this Sunday morning is a perfect yarn to do it in. And Melissa, and now from Sandra Yarns, her shawl, I absolutely have to make. And I also have to make um, Nicole from the Gentle Knitters shawl. She's, but she did it in linen quill. She did it in black and navy, and it's so gorgeous. And Melissa did it in... Um, I don't remember the names of her yarn, but it's like, it's her, basically her neutral, you know, her, uh, her black and white. Neutral. Right. Not black right. and gray kind of. Amazing. You're back, Caitlin. I'm back. I'm so sorry, everybody. This is beyond frustrating. I, I know you're talking, Jackie. I'm sure you have lots to say, but. You've heard it all before, though. So it's like a I good. Know, like, blah, 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 blah. Jackie break. In fact, this Zoom is probably what our conversations are more like in real life anyways. Like the phone's out here. Of course, she can't do that when she's FaceTiming me. Do you remember yeah. when you just talked on the phone and mm -hmm. somebody would be talking and you'd put it over here <laughs> and take a little break? Did you ever do that? Please say Wait. you did. No, I'm not that person. Oh. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm, I'm sure you were just going to the bathroom and you just didn't want them to know. No. Now, Sometimes there are some people, <clears throat> myself, maybe I'm one of those people, um, that they they need a lot of time to to share. Yes. <laughs> okay. So funny. So yeah. Um. Anyway, did did you say since I froze? Did you say that when you post your fo, it's totally fine if it's not in Pearl Soho? Okay, I didn't hear that. So that's what I was trying to say. Okay. Okay, so at Rhinebeck on Friday, we are going to be at an event called Cake Palooza. Cake, cake, cake. Yes. And we are beyond thrilled to be there. I want to show you something that's like loosely related. Yeah. I don't even remember. I do know the name. Okay, way back when. I Tom still am. I'm frozen, or you're frozen. This issue of Pom Pom Magazine. Caitlin, you still need to knit this sweater, by the way. This would be so good on you. This is the Pom Pom number 32, spring 2020. And I knit a sweater in here. And it turns out, I guess I, oh, and here's another one you, we still want to knit. I know. This is such a good issue. Oh my gosh, this is very much kind of like. Yeah. I still want to knit the other one. You, I froze up, but I love that stripe one. I, that has got to be on my list. And maybe that should be my, uh, for find the, fluff? find your fluff. Yes. We, we have, I have a find your fluff FO. I'm just busy looking for this pattern right now and looking. Yeah. Looking so I, while you're looking for that, I'll just mention, oh, you found it. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. So this was a sweater that I knit and I did it in a neutral and I it was absolutely, I loved, I loved the yoke. It was exquisite, but I found that the mohair I chose was too yellow and I just wasn't wearing it. I didn't think it looked good on my complexion. It is so tricky. Um, neutrals, some look like this neutral. I love, love, love. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is about these honeys. Some are good and some are bad and I don't know why. And I wish I did. There are people who know. Anyways, so I sent this sweater to Alyssa at, from Cake Wool because she's such a master of color. And she over dyed it for me. And she over dyed it in this absolutely 
it's, of course this is Zoom, so it's horrible and I'll wear it and show it to you sometime. Um, this color is the French anemones, the purple black color that I love. And this thing has, I'm just popping it on for two seconds because it's too- I love that it's hotter there than where, it, where I am. <laughs> okay, right? Two seconds. Ugh. It has these amazing sleeves. Do you see them? Yeah. So it's so everything. It's so elegant and beautiful. And it's a different color for me. I mean, it's just such, oh, I love it. Yeah. And actually, you know how we came up with this color? Because she had initially done it in a, a lighter purple, which I didn't care for. And yeah. I sent her that poem that I read at the beginning. And I said I wanted it to have that mood and be yeah. like French anemone. So, so I'm very excited. So Kate, right. will, um, do you want to talk about that event and who's going to be there? So um, Cake Wool is ha hosting this incredible event called Cake Palooza, and it will be Friday, October 15th. And it's an all day event really from, um, I think 10 to six, but she's um, selling tickets in shifts. But let me just tell you first who the vendors are, because I've got the list here, because it's amazing. Yeah. Asylum Fivers, Black Pearl Magic, Cake Wool, of course, Chelsea Yarns, Clinton Hill Cashmere, Fashion School Dropout Yarn, Forever Yarn. I will say Forever Yarn um, is hosting uh, Amy from La Bienname. So that's a really exciting sort of last minute thing. Knit Collage, Amy will be there with all the things. Melanated Boho Bay, her yarn is so fabulous. Rosie Posy Design, Sprinkled Fibers. I think Sprinkled Fibers is only gonna be virtual. I think that was the last minute. Tanny Casey will have her bags. Mermaid's Pearl, our friend Lizzie will be hosting her whole booth. Toad Hollow, Wobble Gobble, Yarn Birds, Robin from Yarn Birds will be there with Birdie, her, um, her RV stocked full and you don't wanna miss that. So that's a list of the vendors. And then we are um, what I guess we would be called special guests and we will be set up with a uh, COVID safe kissing booth. <laughs> Alyssa had the great idea of having a kissing booth with Caddy Jacks. Like, why would we say no to that? <laughs> yeah. But we will be front and center meeting and greeting everybody. We're going to have a cute backdrop for photos. And we'd love to hang out with you and go, you know, walk around the event. So um, uh, over your outfits and see what you're buying. Exactly. Exactly. So I'm just going to list the other two. So uh, special guests are Caddy Jacks Knits. Hello, that's us. Um, Kimberly McLinden will be there. She's a really cool designer, Yessie's Designs. Um, so lots of new to us people. Uh, but I just wanted to say that their ticket, so she, it's a ticketed event. She's um, selling, um, I'm just gonna try to um, look up the info. She's selling um, different time slots. I'm just trying to pull that up. Wait for it, wait for it. So there's um, a 10 to 11.45 time slot, 12 to 1.45, 2 to 3.45, and 4 to 6. So the, the event ends at 6. Um, and so she's controlling how many people are going to be there. It's going to be all outside, intense. Uh, it's a, on her beautiful property. So we hope you'll join us and stop by and say hi. But we will be there all day, people. So come <laughs> Feed us, <laughs> bring us food and snacks. <laughs> I'm not there, I'm in the bathroom. <laughs> exactly. If she's not there, I will be there. Um, yeah, we need to get a cooler out there with Diet Cokes. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we're super excited to be there for that event and to meet people. And um, and so, you know, if for some reason you're not going to be able to come to Rhinebeck, but you can come to that, bring your shawl, you know, all the things. So we're excited to be a part of that. And Christy Glass will be um, offering a knit and escape virtual yes. version, which I'm sure we will pop on to that too. But yes. if you're not going to be at Rhinebeck at all, um, you could go over to the knit and escape and find out how to get tickets for the virtual event where she'll find sure. yeah. you to participate. Yep, she'll be interviewing the different vendors and then they'll be showcasing the yarns and things like that. So I think everybody's making a really big effort to make this as accessible to, as possible because of course, not everyone can be there. And um, so we're gonna do our best to bring it to you too, so. 
and uh, I, you know, it's just, it's, just, it's gonna be too hot to wear the knits. <laughs> I think it's going to be like 75 or something like that. I don't think that's the high. We have the weather on app on. Let's see. Okay. Ryan Beck weather. We haven't checked today. I checked. I think it said 75. And then on Saturday, it said rain. 40%. But, you know, that's 40% people. It just needs to happen from 3 o'clock on. That looks so good. Thank you for showing us here. By what? Nothing you're doing. I was trying to pull this Oh, I, well, you know what? It doesn't look, it looks skin colored, so I forgot you had that on. Sure. Anyways, yeah. this, we have a cal going, um, a find your, I'm just like posing. Here yeah. Right. Let me mm -hmm. show off the sleeves. This yeah. is by Lindsay Deegan, the Deegan Brioche Bubble Crew, and the yarn is Wandering Flock, and it is just a glorious, it's one of those yarns where, you know, it has, oh, I wish I could show, you know, it has, part of it is one color and the other part is another mm -hmm. color. The mm -hmm. green is really gorgeous, striping and pooling. Pooling. Mm -hmm. And it's brioche. And I did do some helical knitting. And, oh, I just think it's so cozy. It's and amazing. beautiful. It doesn't look good with what I, you know, the shirt on. <laughs> Whatever, it looks great. But the yarn is from Wandering Flock. I also think, I feel like Wandering Flock and Cake Wool are spiritually connected. Mm -hmm. they, have, they both have that vitality, that joy, that insouciance in their color palettes. Yes. And so this feels very much, when I thought of Cake Palooza, this felt kind of like how, even though it's not, at my, um, what did I knit out of cake wool? I knit the, what is that that we all knit? And it was so beautiful yeah. last year. The sorrel, 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 yeah. yeah. But anyways, that is, I just wanted to mention it because we are doing a find your fluff. And I wanted to show you something, Caitlin, because we're all kind of obsessed right now about bows. And I have a ton of this yarn left over. And so there's this woman, um, Tiny Owl Knits, and her pattern is the Bo Peep Scarf. I love that. Which is incredible. And I want to show you something that I was discovering, just by the way. Do you know how we all have these? I mean, check this out, just by the way. I've never yeah. worn it like this before. You yeah. could knit it, or... I mean, Brilliant. Right? Like, look at Brilliant. that. Brilliant. Brilliant. Wonderful. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, anyways, I definitely want to be knitting myself a big bow. I, I was thinking, I was thinking that I could knit the bow in this yarn and yeah. wear it the sweater, oh. but I didn't. But I would love to. Yeah. But Caitlin has some ideas too because of of bow material but we're kind of obsessed with bows right we now. are so don't be surprised if we do a bow cow <laughs> there's this incredible sweater on ravelry that's like white lace and then it has little black bows oh really i don't yeah it's so shared that with me yeah. yeah no that's beautiful i definitely i i feel like i mean i have this terrarium that's full of all my mohair scraps I think it would just be so fun to do something with that yeah. um, and I will I would like to just say about wandering flock um, we're not going to have it on this episode but we have some another uh, installment of our love of uh, wandering flock yarn um, so that's to come but yes I've been like itching to share this and we have it's a surprise so we, we are part of a like a friendship shawl make along and give away yeah. and we're not going to show those to you guys until our actual friends get to see them first yeah it's but, a nice mess. <laughs> but it's killing us it's killing us we wanted to show you all summer long and we haven't yes it's so hard to keep your knitting a secret. It's totally hard. And then it seems like, why, why haven't they posted anything? Oh, because they're knitting a secret. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, um, so our 
uh, I will we'll just say in terms of Rhinebeck, like, so we're, we're, we'll definitely be at Cake Blues all day, but we do plan on stopping in at the Woolen Folk Festival, um, which is on Thursday of that week. And it's at the Hudson, the Hudson Yard. Yard something which is supposed to be some beautiful outdoor space um so there'll be tons of vendors there so we will be there at some point probably late afternoon um and other than that we will be out and about in Rhinebeck and um if you see us somewhere come say hi mm -hmm. uh, anyway so that that's um it'll be a whirlwind trip I have two more like I'm only going to show you this one because I was cleaning this morning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I have not forgotten that last time I went to Rhinebeck, um, Whiskey and Wool brought me this yarn and I still haven't knit it up. And I thought it would be so fun to take to Rhinebeck and possibly knit up while I was there. So I'm bringing that along. I have to weigh it and see if there's enough for the pattern I'm thinking about. <laughs> There's that. And then you're not going to talk about the pattern. Oh, do you want to know? I guess you probably well, of course we want to know like what what kind of tease is that? Oh, here's some yarn. I'm thinking some things. Okay. It, <laughs> you see what I have to put up with people? Oh, you do want to know? Okay. Okay. It's a halter top. So and I just have to make sure I have a enough yardage. I'm going to bring up the picture right now. We've we keep wanting to make these cute little things, but we never do. We are always knitting sweaters instead. Oh. So. Oh yeah, that's adorable. Of course, that would look amazing on you. Yeah, I think it would be very fun. So that's, I'm bringing that along. We'll see. I have very, very low expectations of myself being able to knit. And then I guess speaking of shawls, Okay, I just wanted to say, um, and this is going to segue perfectly to knit collage. Um, Stephen West has his mystery knit along, which I've never participated in before. And I've mostly, gosh, I've, but I've always enjoyed watching so much. I've just absolutely enjoyed them. And life has been very hard and stressful. And I can't say that enough. And he's such a joy. And I thought, I need, I need that. Like with the half wrap, like the momentum of it, it is going to shift. It will shift. And so I thought it would be fun to participate in um, a mystery middle along and be, you know, participating in the community around that. And so I've had this yarn in my stash. I actually, don't judge me had 14 skeins of this yarn in my stash for over a year and it just sits there and I look at it and I look at it and I look at it. <laughs> and and then at like midnight Friday night it just I, I mean I, I couldn't get it to make a shawl and then all of a sudden I did so I just want to show it before I cake it up because I haven't even started it. It's from Tribe Yarn. Here are my three sort of colors it's schweden rot yarns and they're not soup i mean there's a couple that are kind of what do we call this when they're they're not speckled but they're a little do you know what not gradient no you know when it has color block i don't know what the term is i'm sure some viewers sitting there going oh, that's not our expertise our expertise isn't like yarn. It, I wish it were. And maybe over time it'll become more so. I mean, we definitely, when I think back, you remember how we didn't even know what fingering or sport or DK was? Yeah, or super wash or, yeah. So this is, this happens to be super wash nylon because it's all about the color. It's her luxury sock. But anyways, he said that you wanted to have something to frame. So this is going to be my framing one and it's called Tiger Lily and then something to pop. So this will be my pop, which is Pink Panther. Mm. And so I think these are absolutely ridiculously amazing and gorgeous. Yeah. <clears throat> and I'm thrilled. So I'll kick them up, but I am, there's no, there's no pressure and he doesn't put any pressure on you and to get it done by a certain time. My only thing is I want to play along. And mm -hmm. so 
and I want to, um, you know, be in uh, inspired. I love watching his videos. I mean, I know, it was at the Friday night. I watched his videos and he just, I, I feel like it's okay. Like it's okay to borrow somebody's energy and joy for yourself when you need it. Like that's the whole thing about community is sometimes I have that energy and joy. Sometimes I don't. And so that's what we offer each other, yeah. which is fantastic. And which I think drum roll leads us to energy and joy extraordinaire as well. Yes, for sure. So in the spirit of knit collage cows, I am wearing um, last spring's knit along kaleidoscope um, sweater. Last spring? Yeah, that, I mean, this was what I knit when I moved to Tennessee and was sitting in a dark house missing you. Yeah, I'm gonna put mine on, but I'm gonna put it on with something with a bow. Gotcha. Keep I'm going. Distracted. I don't even know. What, oh, I see what you You just changed your shirt. I okay. put it over the top. I haven't, there's been no nudity in this podcast, Caitlin. I know you must be very disappointed. Yeah, um, so yeah, so this is my um, kaleidoscope sweater, which was knit out of all the fun yarns. Um, but Knit Collage is, is launching their fall cowl. Uh, Amy just had the design survey out and they've chosen the design. So um, we are thrilled to be playing along again. Uh, and um, we will have some information in our show notes about all the dates, but you haven't missed it. The, uh, the kits go on sale, I believe on the 12th. All right, hold on. Well, cause I can show them all that. Okay. I'll okay. show you my bow. It's so cute. cute. Oh, I like that. That's adorable. Mm -hmm. and, and you could make a knit collage bow for that. Absolutely. And look at this skirt with the sparkles. Like it's too hot to wear right now. Yeah. See how amazing that is? I can't really see the sparkles, but it looks adorable. I guess. It's just, yeah. Oh, I feel like um, I want to talk about Amy and her videos for a minute. Mm -hmm. Okay. And she, she doesn't just like haphazardly go there. She goes directly into why to knit and it's to, to boost your creativity and your confidence and to, to as, a, as, as a form of self care. It's like joy therapy, mm -hmm. it's like going to the spa or something like that. This yeah. is yarn spa. And yes, yes, it's it's um, extravagant like a spa is, but it, it's designed specifically to, um, and it really has that effect where it is the most playful yarn out there. There's nothing like that. Don't you agree, Caitlin? Totally agree. I mean, her her color palettes are ever changing. The um, all you know, she's always bringing in new bases. Um, new techniques. Oh, she's gone out. There's no voice, Caitlin. Uh, can you say something? Are you back? Nope, she's frozen. Um, this was, what was this then? If, if you said that, you said the kaleidoscope was last spring, but this was last spring. So you're talking two years ago, I think. Yeah. I think you're, oh, you're right. You're right. You're right. It was 2020. What year is it? And this is 2021. Sorry. Yes. And then I'm not going to take it off, but this is my version. Yeah. And here's mine. And, <clears throat> and I did some embellishments with some extra yarn. And I mean, it's all about play. It's about color play. It's about texture play. It's, um, it's just such a joy. Um, and so we're thrilled to be participating again. Um, and, uh, you know, you, um, do, are you ready? What are you doing? Oh, you putting on another one? Okay. I'm just showing my, my Nicolage. Yeah. Would, this one so, you have to make, Caitlin. I know, you say that. Why don't you knit it for me? 
this is not a knit collage pattern, but it's knit collage yarn. Yeah. And it, you know, and I put the the cuff. The pattern is good night day, but this motif, this was my idea to make a little varsity jacket and it's all the leftovers and it's so much fun. And then there's one more. I was going to style all these things and make like toe to head knit collage videos, but it's just been too, it's just been too much. But every time, and here's the other one, this was the, the best that, that I made. I don't know. This was the fall of last year. Right, right. And it's very fun. I still wonder if I want to put sleeves on it, but I love wearing it. I absolutely love wearing it under a jean jacket. It's mm -hmm. so perfect because then your arms are, so it's kind of nice to have that option. So I probably yeah. will. It's like they, we should just make uh, knit collage dickies. Exactly. We really <laughs> should. And so in watching Amy's videos, I had started off thinking I was going to knit one thing and decided to knit two. I was so inspired. So, you know, they're for all levels. And there's also this incredible community around it. So, for instance, the we um, were put together in little groups last time. And my little friend from that group, I contacted her today and was like, are we going to be, are we going to be knitting buddies again? And yeah. we pictures of yarn to each other and so you know it's not like it's just a wonderful way to meet people and those zoom calls where you get to like look into the homes of knitters and see all of their knit collage are so fun yeah super fun so what do you have to play with this year Kate? so i am going to well you i don't uh, let me pull up the designs um i'm going to do be doing the loop it up cardi um Let's see, maybe. I can share my screen. Okay, share your screen. So I'm going to be doing the Loop It Up Cardi and I my base color is Honeysuckle. Um, and which is definitely not coming up in Zoom color land. So it's definitely a mustardy yellow with really kind of soft off white sort of spun into it. And then this is the spun cloud. So it does, it has, little gold Stellina um, also running through it. I feel like the Loop It Up cardigan has sort of that Chanel jacket um, feel to me. And um, did you find it yet? Well, I am kind of wondering where I went. I can't find myself anymore. Oh, well, here, let me just look one. I'll just look it up. Um, okay. Probably just pull it up on my phone. Um, hold on. Because the interesting thing is when I go to share screen, I'll do it. I'll just start over and do it. Fine. I'm just get, here, I'm just going to pull up Nick Claus. So the um, design I'm doing, I don't know how well you can see it, but it's this little cardigan with these loop details that are sort of striped throughout. Um, and let's see if there's a back version. Um, Anyway, so I'm doing it in this honeysuckle, but you know, it's like one yarn isn't enough of for <laughs> Nick Lodge. You always want something more to go with it. And I'm going to experiment. I don't know if it's going to work or not, but I also picked out um, from her wildflower yarn, the ochre, ochre rose colorway. And what I thought I would try to do is work this wildflower in as the loops instead of just the solid color. So that's my goal. So I feel like it might have like a kaleidoscope cardi kind of feel where you're bringing in other colors into it and to just have this little loop stripe might be fun. So that is my plan. Um, so I'm super excited for that. And I really don't have enough cardigans in my life. And I think that they are, they do sometimes make things a little bit more wearable, especially in Tennessee. Like that would be my jacket. So, yeah. Um, <clears throat> so I'm sorry. I've been so out of practice with, with zoom that I had it all, all queued up all of the designs. Yeah. And, then it went away, but you know what, what, what better place to go than to knit collage anyways, to see yeah. the and watch her intro videos. Yeah, I mean, so, she's got great videos. Um, I'm 
to flash my palette. Yeah. Beautiful. You it's know, a lot of yarn. Yeah, it is. I, I have this knit collage knitting bag that was given to me. It's a gift. But last year I was obsessed with, she had these new wildflower colors. These are two of the new wildflower yeah. colors. And then she um, introduced this new color. So my- What's that one called? This one is called Blush. What is it, Blush? Blush. This is a very, um, for me, a very purpley blush. It's not as a pinky blush, but that's okay. And then one of the yarns that I, this is For the Roses. This is Dreamland. And boy, you know, the Dreamland yarn is amazing. And I got some Lagoon. Hmm. I think I've worked with that before. And this was left over from previous. This is your sweater but I have Ooh. some too, because I got Lily a kit to make the wild, mm -hmm. wild mm -hmm. flower power. And that's the mint color, it's coming yeah. out blue. But I, I got this as my main color for, um, for one of the sweaters that I'm going to do, but I'm not even gonna mention that first, because I want to do the mountain party, and I, will, I can show you on here the colors that I'm choosing. It's not a kit, so you, I don't mean to make anything complicated, so my apologies, <laughs> but how I, how I choose colors at mm -hmm. Nicolage is I take pictures and then I use the app called Pick Frame and I yeah. make little um, collages and I like to do it that way. So here's my Pick Frame. Um, so, oh, you care. You, this is just terrible. Well, yeah. But this will be the main color for the, the mountain cardigan and then with the accent mm -hmm. with this bright highlighter and that. So we, and we will just, um, sorry, we don't have the current samples, but we, we're we gonna just play along with you. We'll cast on in November and go to the Zooms and just kind of immerse yeah. ourselves in all that Knit Collage has to offer. You don't have to, you can join, you can have a package and just join, you know, use your own yarn if you're a hand spinner or something like that. And you can just join to have access to the patterns and the zooms and the videos and things like that too. Mm -hmm. so we, we, like so many other people, we have an affiliate link. And if you choose to support the podcast, we would be ever so, grateful um it's just a way for us to keep as you know just like another another opportunity for us to keep seeing each other and doing and taking the time out to do the the special things so yeah. caitlin you don't know this but we did reach nine thousand subscribers wow. on youtube and so we always do a giveaway when we have some milestone like that, and I, what better time, right? What are you thinking for a giveaway, Caitlin? Is that for our celebrating reaching 9,000, maybe we donate to the scholarship fund that she has. Oh, I love that idea. So I think that's what we should do, you guys, because you guys don't have time. But in honor of the community that we've built around here, which is fantastic, we love you, we thank you, we appreciate you, we're glad you're here. We're going to donate to the scholarship fund. I know that idea. Put $100 in there. And then we know that somebody who really needs it is going to get it. And they'll get it in a timely fashion. I love that. That's perfect. Yay. Yeah. So Amy will be at Cape Palooza too. So yes. Good to see yeah. her. Good to see I her. did want to... Um, I just want to mention one thing and we'll do, um, we'll do more of a formal announcement probably in our lives and things when we're... Um, at Rhinebeck, but we do, we are working on um, a fun little project um, and we don't want to give it away, the information out right now, but just know for those of you that are meeting up with us at the Hill with your um, half wraps, we have something we're going to, um, really excited to share with you. And then we'll have an opportunity to share that with our viewers that are not able to be at Rhinebeck. So stay tuned for that. It's really exciting. And again, sort of along the lines of what you were talking about, we are are just so fortunate to work with other makers out there and and just be able to sort of spread the joy so i can't wait for you to meet our um the person that um we're working with and and show you all the things that we've got going with that so mm -hmm. a little teaser 
Mm -hmm. Little teaser. Yeah. I was I was thinking this morning, in my family, we don't exchange Christmas presents. We get together on Christmas morning and we we talk about what we would give you. Like the sky's the limit. We can give yeah. you anything. And we go around and we tell each other what we'd give each other. And it's so much fun because it's fun being known. You know, that's the pleasure. So if somebody would say to you, I I would give you a trip to, and then they talk about, you know, like a garden tour of England in the spring. And, yeah. you, and you'd stay at a little stone cottage. They don't have to actually do it. It's just such a thrill yeah. that they thought of you. And I'm starting to believe that we need to have a tradition like that on the podcast where we could talk about what we would knit for, you know, it's that whole like um, dream knitting, but really let it not, let it be an actual, like I've come up with my dream knitting project for the month. And Caitlin, would you like to start doing that? Like for our next podcast, you know, just pretend I'm actually going to knit this. This is my <laughs> Yeah. Well, we all have the list. Right. And so yeah. one of those dream projects every time. Yeah. And as if it happened. Yeah. Because we're all coming to terms with the, to, with the fact that we can't knit at all. I know. Actually, I do feel like I had something I wanted to show along those lines. Let me just see if I can find it. Cause I, was like, okay. I have one too. I don't know if I can show it, but you, you look, um, at, you look for yours. Yeah. My dream knitting. Although I, this one really, um, is on the cusp of, yeah, it's going to happen. <laughs> so do you want, do you want me to talk about mine while you look for yours? Oh, she's frozen. We can't hear you. Say something again, dear. Nope. She's frozen. Back. No, she's back. Okay. Go ahead. Okay, well, I mean, this more along the lines of find your fluff, and I love that there's like this little video to it. Um, can you see any of that? Mm -hmm. mm. But I love the cuff on this that she shows. It has this little like tux to it, and it's look at that. It's like a boat neckline. It's like perfection, perfection. Um, so it is, I feel like everyone I've been following lately is um from another country and i have to have the thing translated but it's mori at morissette c is her um is her um i'll show her a little thing is the designer um and she does something i had shown this before like the she also did this sweater with those cuffs that i love oh, right yeah so i believe she's a french designer and a lot of her things are available in um, English too, but anyway, that was my latest little like, ooh, cozy, soft, balloon sleeve with a little tuck. So my, um, my thing that I would like to be knitting, you know, that I say to myself, I'm going to go to Rhinebeck and I'm going to see oh. is this. I love that too. So beautiful. So Gundra Johnson will be, which event will she be at? I think she, I think she'll She's be, going to be at the Woolen Folk. Yeah, she'll be at the Thursday one at Brooklyn General, I believe. And what mm -hmm. this is the Pom Pom magazine that is Trader Shetland Trader Book Three Heritage. And these, if you haven't seen it yet, mm -hmm. her mother was a knitwear designer back in the 70s. And so she spent several years in the recent past recreating her, her catalog. Yeah. And them up, making samples and using like the original colors, etc. And this pattern and all of her samples will be available. And they all are so romantic and they have, you know, incredible sleeves details. Did you see the dress? Did you see the dresses yes. that she yes. just posted? Yes. I've seen the whole collection because I've seen YouTube videos, but yeah. that's something I'm so eager to knit. And so, yeah. I will have knit it, but that would be yeah, exactly done. Like it in edit land, you could actually say this and then you could <laughs> edit it in. There it is. Yeah. But we, we, I'm glad you brought up a find your fluff. It's a whole year long cow that it goes to the end of the school year. Uh, yeah. I've been talking to a wandering flock again about getting some more of her 
silk mohair because I mm -hmm. love, love it so much. But just again, you have all the time in the world or you can just follow the hashtag to get fluffy ideas. But we want to have find your fluff because we feel like it's all about dreamy, cozy knits. Yes. Dreamy, yeah. cozy. Uh, and for instance, running silk mohair triple and taking, like I saw when I was in California, they just took the Sunday cardigan and they ran it triple. And to, you know, have it be. The other one that I'm really looking forward to is, and I love the, I hold, I always love the idea of double dipping. So of course, La Bien May is coming out with a book in November all about worsted yarns. And they have a beautiful worsted yarn and absolutely every color will be at Cape Palooza and you can see them. And of course you'll want some. And so yes. will I. But also you could make worsted yarn, out with, you know, making, adding silk mohair to your DK. And then you have, a, you probably will have a cool find your fluff project in there. Totally. Too. There's so much to do that way. Yeah. 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 And it doesn't have to be with mohair and it doesn't have to be with alpaca. It's really like, it's a very loose thing. It could just so. be both. Yeah. Like, like we said. Yeah. Okay. I um, think, what do you got? Well, I just wanted to like, we haven't really touched about, uh, touch base about our personal lives. And I do have something exciting that I'd like to mm -hmm. share with everybody. Yeah. Um, so last time Jackie was visiting in Knoxville, if you watched our episode, we had a little excerpt about the Flourish flower truck. And uh, we interviewed Taylor, who is the farm manager there. And um, you probably don't know this, but I have been scheming and wishing and stalking Flourish flower truck pretty much um, since I've decided that I really want to work with flowers. And anyway, the great news is I have just started a new job working with them. And, and what? Manifested it. Yes, manifested it. And um, I'm just beyond thrilled. I mean, it is week one and so still super excited, but uh, I will eventually um, be doing some design work with them. We do daily deliveries and I will be riding the truck <laughs> and selling um, flowers from the truck. So um, love it if you follow along Flourish Flower Truck um, on Instagram or flourishflowers.com. Anyway, so I, I'm definitely gonna bring you some content from there because it's just beautiful. They're a local company. They have their own farm and about 90% of what they sell is their local flowers. So um, I really am looking forward to sharing about the farm and the process and all things beautiful. And maybe I can work with some of my magic and get Jackie to ride along in the truck with me. Ooh, well. I'd love that. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, so that's super exciting, but I just wanted to share that in case you see some updates on the Caddy Jacks. I just wanted to give you um, a little heads up about that. Good for you. That's wonderful. Yeah. Nice. And yeah. if you can't get enough of Caitlin uh, today, and it ran, it'll be at Black Mountain the weekend after. Oh, I will. Mm -hmm. I will be, yes, I will be traveling because Black Mountain is having um, their indie extravaganza event, which is the weekend after Ryan Beck in Black Mountain. Um, there are tons of vendors coming. Donna will have her whole upstairs. We'll have vendor after vendor after vendor. Um, and I'll, I'll certainly um, be sharing some of that action, but looking forward to doing that. Of course, super sad that Jackie cannot be with me. So um, that's, that's a little bit hard. It's hard to do these things without each other, but um, we will be back together again in Black Mountain for sure, because that's yes. one of our favorite places. So super excited about that. And uh, we'll be back podcasting together. I'll take the footage probably from Rhinebeck and do something with it. But again, we want Thank you to our Patreon folks because we will get a ticket and Caitlin will come see me or I'll come see her. Yeah. And we will be sitting next to each other and having good lighting and all of that stuff. So right. And not on Zoom. Yeah. Sorry about the Zoom. Caitlin, you're going to have to film some footage though in Black Mountain. I know. She's going to step up her, her like. Maybe I'll do live. Lives are easier because they're just there. That's, that's true. Okay. All right. So we love you. We hope you're have some cozy knitting and that you are using your knitting. I'm going to go back to it to 
always, it's always a journey to get to know yourself and what gives you delight. Why else do it? Why else? Why else? Life is so short, so precious, and so knit what you love, right? Yeah. We can't Absolutely. wait to see so many of you. And, and those of you who can't be there, um, we hope we can take you along in some way. And yeah. that. Uh, yeah, we will be holding space for you for sure. So, um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Love you, Jackie. Love you. Bye, everybody. Bye.